All right. Back, I got a sand block and a rasp. Check with me. The first time I've ever stopped the camera to walk out to the garage for a second. Usually just make you guys keep listening, but I didn't have the headset on, so I couldn't keep talking to you guys. But yeah, I'm just gonna come in here and just. Uh, sanding block, I don't even know what grit is on here. It's kind of this roughish. It's, I don't think it's going to be something super soft or fine. It's just, just kind of getting used to blend in here. I don't think I'm actually going to need the rasp. I think I'm just going to do it with just the sanding block. These last are pretty beat up from, you know, however many years they have on them, but I think they I still got a couple more pairs of shoes in them. They're not, probably not gonna last me forever, but uh, I think they'll last until I, you know, <clears throat> either buy another pair of similar kind of used last off eBay or get like a real like not made for me but a brand new set of last it would be nice to have multiple sizes all on the same shape so you could have like some predictability you still have to remake the pattern every time or at least for every like whole size but uh, you kind of know what patterns look good for your last if you had a whole set. But I'm definitely not making enough shoes right now to go about buying a whole set of brand new lasts. Um, yeah, let's see, this is, I forget if this is the good one or the bad one. Well, I thought, I think this is the one I, I did first off of camera. It's not too bad, there, there's still just that tiny bit of indent there that I don't think is gonna terribly matter, especially when I get a uh, sock liner in there. And the, it's, not, it's near the heel, so when you step on this, it's gonna really flatten it out. And that's really gonna, I think, spread out and whatnot. But I just wish I had a little bit more leather there. But I think I'm just gonna stick with this pair. It's like, it's very minor. Like you can see like a tiny bit of uh, like the metal right there. I just wish that curved a tiny bit better. I don't think it's gonna be a noticeable thing. Especially because the heel counter is gonna be there too. So I don't think it's gonna show up a ton in the uh, outside of the boot because the heel counter is, there's just so much leather going over that part of the boot that I think it's uh, pretty inconsequential. If it's not, I don't know. I guess I'll just have to live with it and uh, learn. And decide next time if I uh, if I would redo it. Well, next time I wouldn't cut it so close. There's also a lot of stuff that you're like, ah, oh, next time I'm not gonna do this, and then you kind of forget. It takes some time for me to between pairs of shoes. I've been at it for a year now, and this is only my third pair, so obviously I'm not flying. I'm doing it between, uh, you know, stuff I have to do. In the... it's, not, it's only a hobby, so I'm doing my free time. I guess is the way I should put that, phrase that. But, uh, yeah, you'll... Be like, oh, next time, there's no way this is gonna happen. I'm gonna remember this for next time. And then, like, start doing it again. You're like, what the? 
hell did I do? This one's missing a much bigger chunk. Mm. I wish I had just a tiny bit more leather there. On the bright side, they were both, they were both missing a chunk in the same spot, so. Remember what I said about mistakes and consistency? At least we have consistency. This kind of, this is a rather pointy last, I don't know if I mentioned it before. It's a pretty pointy shoe. It's gonna make lasting around the toe really hard, I think, if we were doing a welted shoe, because you really have to crank that, that leather down underneath it, and it would make a lot of ripples where the leather tightens around the toe. And it'd be very hard to get all those ripples on. And that's one of the big reasons I'm doing a stitch down boot on these. On this pair, first I want to try doing a stitch down boot. I've never done a stitch down boot before. Uh, and second, because I think it's gonna be really hard to do an actual welt on that toe. Third, because of because of it, that look of the narrow toe, I think uh, stitch down boots like just look naturally more chunky at the end because the leather you know comes out, so it adds another extra wrap around the toe of uh, just that darker color leather before it gets to the sole. And I think that's gonna make him look less formal on this, uh, this narrow last of the toe. Yeah, so this is not looking too bad. Okay, these are all sanded out. Let's, I think it, I'll, I'll be able to live with the, the two little heel chunks. I think it's, they look pretty consistent. Uh, this one definitely comes up a little higher on this outside thing. Doesn't look as pretty, but might be able to fix that a little bit. Or I can just probably chop my finger off trying to do this. The most interesting part about making boots, I think, is that you still want to buy boots. Like, like if I mean, if you're if you're making them, you're probably pretty interested in them in general. I saw a pair today. I was like, oh man, I want to buy it. But like, at some point, you just want to get new tools and want to be, you know, instead of spending your money on buying boots, spend your money on tools and uh, leathers and try to give yourself something to like shoot for to make. So some really cool kangaroo, uh, gray kangaroo vibers that someone was selling on eBay. Got very close. It's big enough. Okay, oh, so yeah, I think those are done. These are, just, I can still feel a little bit of moisture in the sole after they're drying, but like I think they're for the most part dried out and you see they've kept the shape really well of this curve in right here. I don't know why this one's so much more nappy. It took them off of the same, same spot. But it uh, doesn't matter because that's all going inside the shoe. The, the upside on here is the, uh, the smooth flesh, not flesh, the smooth outside, whatever it is, skin side, I guess. Um, and yeah, so, what are you doing? You're losing your shit. Um, we have these done. The next step is going to be I gotta stitch that little bit on the toe. I'm probably not gonna show that just because it is what it is. I just gotta stitch that little thing across. Um, I'm gonna find out. There's a cool stitching video for anybody that wants to learn about leather stitching. Uh, don't learn from me. I uh, I don't really have great technique. Um, how? So the, the tutorial that I think is great, oops, this is not it, this is a seven minute tutorial. Oh, here it is. It's called Hand Stitching Leather. Uh, it's called Hand Stitching Leather. It's by a guy named uh, Ian, 
Atkinson, and he he knows a lot more about this than I do. So if you you're mad about me not doing any of the stitching bits, um, don't. That's because you shouldn't learn from me in the first place. You should go learn from this guy. He's better, and uh, he's already made an hour long video about it, and it'll give you different techniques whether you're using a pricking irons or punching holes or just doing it by an awl or whatever. But uh, yeah, so finish stitching those those uppers up and then we're gonna start lasting. That's when it really gets interesting because it really starts to look like a shoe. All right, till next time.